Amen. All right. Um, we've been in Ephesians chapter 1. And we were in verse 17. And we left off in 17. And verse 17 says, Ephesians 1, 17 says, For I always pray to the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory. Father of glory. And I believe the book of Ephesians are keys to walking in God's glory. Did you hear that? The book of Ephesians gives us keys to walk in God's glory. Praise the Lord. Um, the book of Ephesians, praise the Lord, gives us pictures. Amen. You hear me? Gives us pictures. Hallelujah. One of the pictures that the book of Ephesians shows us and gives us is his body. Praise the Lord. His body. Did you hear that? All right. His body. His workmanship, number two. His workmanship. His building. Take good note, Michelle. Reverend George is going to need him. Praise the Lord. His body, his workmanship, his building. Now, let's back that up. How do we back it up? We back it up with scriptures, right? All right, we just don't say things to say things, right? Amen. Not behind the pulpit. And if you're talking about the things of the Lord, you shouldn't even be saying things to say things just because you want to look smarter than someone else. Remember, it's about knowing him, praise God, right? It's about knowing him and not just having knowledge of him. It's about knowing him. Who's him? Christ, our Lord. Praise the Lord. It's about knowing Him, not just having knowledge of Him. You can have knowledge of a matter and not really know the matter. Okay? So, in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 22, remember it's about His body, I said, right? That's a picture in Ephesians. It's about His body. All right, so here we go. And he has put all things under his feet and has appointed him the universe and the supreme head of the church, a headship exercised throughout of the church. Now, I'm reading an amplifier today. So in King James, if it's up there, and I know it is, he says in verse 22, he says, God has put all things under the authority of Christ and has made him head. And who's the body? We are. We are. Lower the mic a little bit. It's too loud. We are. Thank you. And he's the head. Who's the groom? He is, and we are the bride. All right? So God has put all things under the authority of Christ and has made him head over all things for the benefit of the church. All right? For the benefit of his body. The church is his body. Praise the Lord. Okay? So that's the first picture he shows us right now. He's showing us a picture Praise God. Or let's call it a portrait of God's people. All right? Can I say that? A portrait. This is a portrait. This is a picture of you and me. All right? God has put all things under the authority of Christ and has made him head over all things for the benefit of the church. So if he's head of everything... When you have a dilemma, you can go to him and he'll give you the solution. 
Now in verse 23, watch what he says. That's the last verse in Ephesians. He says, and the church is his body. Do you see the portrait? Do you see the picture? The church is his body. It is made full and complete. And when he says full, it means um, from the top of your head to the sole of your feet. Praise the Lord. Full and complete by Christ. Who fills all things everywhere with himself. So if you feel empty, maybe you don't have enough Christ in you. If you, need, if you feel empty, if you feel something missing, won't you seek him out? Praise the Lord. Okay, good. Now, I gave you a second portrait, and the second portrait is his workmanship, right? I said first the body, and we gave you scriptures to back it up. Now, the second picture I want to give you, or the second portrait, is his workmanship, which you will find that in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10, please. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. In the Amplifier, he calls us his handiwork. Handiwork, praise the Lord. So in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10, I better go to the New King James so I don't throw you guys to the side. He says, for we are his workmanship, created in whom? Christ Jesus. What do you see? You see the anointing, the anointed one, the Messiah. So we're created in the anointed one. So if we're created in the anointed, that means that we are also anointed to do something. To do what? For good works. There it is. So each and every one of us here is called to do good work. Praise the Lord. Prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. What do you mean, in them? In the Amplifies, I love what he said. For we are God's own handiwork, his workmanship, recreated in Christ Jesus, born new, that we may do those good works which God predestined, planned beforehand for us, taking paths which he prepared ahead of time. Oh, ain't no coincidence that I'm here, praise the Lord. It is no coincidence that you're doing what you're doing. He predestined it. He, he predestined it. If it is the will of God, if you're in the will of God, it is no coincidence where you're at right now. It is his will for you to be where you're living right now. Now, if, if you're in his will, praise the Lord, and if you're not in his will, then we're going to get you in his will. Praise the Lord. So that you can receive the gift that he has for you. Amen? Because we've been doing it on our own. We've been messing up big time. We, we've been stinky. Smelly. And then he goes on saying, plan before, beforehand for us. Taking path which he prepare ahead of time. That we should walk in them. Living the good life. Hallelujah. Oh, I like that. Living the good life. Now, everyone sees the good life differently. Well, I'm not here to convince you how you should live your life. Go to him and ask him how you should live your life. All right? That's between you and God. Because what I may call the good life, you may not call it. You, you may call Something that someone else may see it simple, the good life. Some people want a complicated life by their action. Look, God don't judge you by you being male or female. God, char char God, God judges you by your performance. So if, if God looks at you like that, I look at you like that too. I look at everything like that. It's not about male, female. It's about performance. 
performance is judging you. You know? So, <laughs> if I was Jay-Z, but I'm not, <laughs> but if I was, I'll tell you, show me what you got, baby. Because you got a lot of this and no action. Thank you. So here we are in verse 10, that we should walk in them, living the good life, which he prearranged. Who prearranged this life? He did. And made ready for us to live. I love this. This really gets me high. He, he made it for us to live. So we might be going through something right now, but we're not going to stay here forever. It's going to change for us. But you got to stop acting up and you got to line up with me. Because if I'm lining up, you need to line up too. You know, the church don't understand that God's looking for servants. Some people come to church thinking that God is looking for leaders. God is looking for servants. Amen? So we're going to serve. Let's serve right. Praise the Lord. So getting back to Ephesians. Uh, what, let me do this. Hold on now. Ephesians uh, chapter 1. Let's go back to Ephesians chapter 1. Or, wait a minute, wait a minute. No, let me not do that to you. Because I gave you three portraits, right? Three pictures I gave you, right? I gave you first his body, his workmanship, and then I said something about his building, right? Okay, so stay in chapter 2. Thank you, Father. Stay in chapter 2 and go to verse 21. We're going to do 21 and 22. So you see, his building, what is his building? His temple. Amen. His temple. Okay, verse 21. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 21. It says, in him, in him, okay, well, let me go into King James first. All right? 21, right? 21, I said. Thank you. Because 22 is the last verse. In him, in him, the whole building being fitted together grows into a holy temple in the Lord. In whom? In him. In Christ. So Christ puts, thank you, Father. Christ puts a person in the office. And now that, that person in the office has to be accountable to Christ. And so are you. So, that person that he puts in, praise the Lord, becomes the example of that organization. So, here in verse 21, what he's saying, he's building us to be temples. Praise God. Did you hear that? Temples. Temples. His building is his temple. That's what we're talking about. And the temple should be fitting together, growing together. Okay? All right? Growing together. Fit, that means we're in one mind and one accord. So if we have one person thinking differently to what's connected to the head, then, then that person could sabotage what he has pre -de Are you listening to me? I know this is a lot of word for us, but we can receive it. That person is, can sabotage what God has predestined for that ministry. That's why it's important to know your place. There, there's an old, when I started ministry, uh, I used to be told by my upline, stay in your post. My God, I love you, God. I love you, God. Stay in your post. Stay tied to the post. Oh, Jesus. Stay tied to the post. Stay tied to the post. Everybody knows. Everybody knows. Everybody knows a whole lot. Okay, good for you. Then put your own church. <laughs> Go do what you need to do. Everybody knows a whole lot. But they know a whole lot of nothing. Okay? And they used to tell me that when I started in ministry. Stay in your post. Stay tied to your post. And these wasn't Mickey Mouse people. Because as I go see them now, they're in good places. Why? Because they've been faithful and obedient to God. 
Okay? So when you stay faithful and obedient to God, and I'm not talking about a whole lot of this, I'm talking about action. Action. Because there's a phrase that they say, action speaks louder than words. Now the only word that is supreme is the word of God. And if you follow that word, those words will become action. Praise the Lord. Now in verse 22, look what he tells us. So I can finish it up here. In whom you also are being built together. Oh my God. Father God, let them have ears to hear. In whom you also are, be, you are being built together for a dwelling place. God gives us a dwelling place. Of God in the spirit. In the spirit. In the spirit. So in other words, in the, in the Amplified said, in him the whole structure is, is joined, bound, welded together, harmonically, I can't say that word, say help me, harmonically, you know, in harmony, and it continues to raise and grow and increase. So I pray in the name of Jesus that seeing the impossible will continue growing and increasing. Praise the Lord. Increasing, praise God. Into a holy temple in the Lord, a sanctuary dedicated, consecrated, and sacred, sacred to the presence of the Lord. You just can't come in here and think in the name of Jesus is about you. It's the Ralph Cramden show starting at Norton. No, it's not. It is the, this is the house of the Lord. When we come to the house of the Lord, we must have reverence, praise the Lord. We have lost it. We have lost the fear of the Lord. We have lost it. We've gotten too commercialized or too comfortable. I don't know what. But here the book of Ephesians gave us three pictures, three portraits, praise the Lord, and it will help you in your life, praise God. It will help you. If you follow these patterns, my God, it will take you to the next place where you need to be. Now, let me give that to you again. The first picture or the first portrait of God's people is his body. Praise the Lord. The second portrait is his workmanship. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me give you the, the scripture again. His body. Chapter 1, verse 22 and 23. And then number two, his workmanship, chapter two, verse 10. And, and then you got to study this. Praise God. Because once you get to know this, and then you'll be able to get your ATM card, spiritually speaking, and, 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 and tap into that spiritual bank account that he's given us. All things work together for good to those that love God. So let's make it work good. What do I need to do to receive God's blessing? Can I reverse this curse? Can I get out of this mess? Is it possible whatever I have created, he can uproot it and restore me and renew me and revive me so that I can be that person that he wants me to be. If you believe that's you, say amen. Amen. I, amen, I believe so. That's the word of God. So his workmanship is, is Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. And then his building is Ephesians chapter 2, 21 and 22. Praise the Lord. Are you listening to me? Okay. Now... The contact... Contact. I'm saying it right? Contact. Okay. Of a Christian is, number one, l listen to me, adoption from Christ. We've been adopted by the Lord. We have, number two, acceptance. Hmm. And then number three, we have redemption. I'll say that again. We have adoption, number one. Contents. The contents of God's people. 
I'll spell it out. I can't say it, but I can spell it out. C-O-N-T-E-N-T-S. Okay. Of God's people. Praise the Lord. Of God's people. Of God's people. Of God's people. It's God's people. Praise the Lord. You hear me? The first one is adoption. Praise God. The second one is acceptance. Yes, Lord, I hear you. Tell the baby to go outside. outside. Tell the baby to go Tell the baby to go outside. Not outside the street, but just outside the, the cubby hole. Adoption. Are you listening to me? Hey, 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 look at me, man. You don't be looking at nobody else. Look at me. Praise the Lord. I got to teach them. So they don't grieve the Holy Ghost. Amen? I got to teach them. Amen? So we see now, we see how, they, how people act. If the mother accept me, she knows I'm a man of God. And I don't want her to offend God. See? But we have people that have been serving God for a little while and they think they're all that in a bag of chips. Man, you better get real. You hear me? You better get real. You got to get... Anyone... Look, when I have disrespected God, I've gotten my, my share of rebuke. In fact, the other day, when I went through that, I told my wife, I says, I know what happened to me. He was telling me, check one, check two. You on my time. Yes, sir. Whew. Check one, check two. That's my check. Check one, check two. You on my time. Yes, sir. So we have adoption. We have acceptance. We have redemption. All here in Ephesians. These are pictures. These are portraits. Praise the Lord. Of Ephesians. This is what Ephesians tells us that we are. Amen. Good sister. That's what he tells us. This is what you are. You ain't no curse. You're a blessing. You ain't no mess. You're a masterpiece. The devil's a lion. Jesus is a Messiah. You've been living in this system so long that you think you're a mess. I can take your broke self and turn you into a blessing. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. <laughs> and, the, and the blessing is not for you. It's to bless someone else who needs it. Praise God. So that's what it's about. Acceptance. Adoption. Acceptance. Redemption. You, you ready for number four? Forgiveness. If God forgive you, why don't you forgive yourself? You and your prideful self. But you higher than God. That's why you can't forgive yourself. You, you, you better stop that. Keys to walking in God's glory. These are keys. And us ministers, reverends, okay? And us ministers and reverends, we need to do a better, we need to do a better job getting in the presence of the Lord. Thank you, Father. And hearing from him, study his word so you can share it with the people. Instead of sharing little sermonettes that you buy in a 99 cent store, a dollar store. You better bring the word of God. That's what God says. So number four is forgiveness. Praise God, right? And then let me give you another principle. Number five is wisdom. The book of Ephesians show you how to get some wisdom. I told you that through, oh my God, what was it? 16 or 15, 15 through 23, I believe it is. Yeah, 15 through 23 is a prayer for wisdom. So you can receive wisdom. That you can get enlight, enlight, enlightenment, he says. He wants to give you enlightenment, praise the Lord. Open up the, he wants to open up your eyes so that you can see, praise the Lord. That what really matters to you, it don't really matter. Oh God, I love you. But he has an assignment for us. And this is what really matters. Not that what you've been doing. Okay, you got it? You okay? Everybody breathe in, breathe out. I got a couple of more minutes. And then uh, number six, I talked about that inheritance, remember? 
In the book of Ephesians, there is Herod. All this out of chapter 1. All this out of chapter 1. Inheritance. And then, and then number 7. You okay? You there with me? I don't want to get ahead of you. Number 7 is the seal of the Holy Spirit. Very important. Now, I told you before what the seal means. You know what a seal means? Ownership. So he has ownership in, uh, of your life. And then number eight, it teaches us life. The book of Ephesians teaches us how to walk in our life. How to, how to have the good life. Praise the Lord. That's what he said. The good life. Praise God. We've been having such bad life, we don't know what a good life is anymore. Well, let's change this thing around. And how we do it? By being obedient. Because the Bible says in Isaiah 1, 19, if you're willing and obedient, you eat the good of the land. But what? guess what? Uh, please put Isaiah 1, 17. But guess what? We got to learn how to do good. We don't know how to do good. We've been doing bad so long that to us, oh, this is okay. This is normal. No, it's not. It's time to learn how to do good. Praise God. It's time to learn how to do good. Let's do good. Yeah. Let's do good. I said, Isaiah, we're going to go over there. Isaiah 117. Isaiah 117, please. The major prophet, Isaiah. Isaiah 117. Learn to do good. Seek. Seek justice. You know what seek justice is? Do the right thing. Rebuke the oppressor. You know what an oppressor is? You know what's been oppressing you? What's been oppressing you? What's been oppressing you? What's been oppressing you? Lack of understanding? Been oppressing you? Okay, lack of wisdom? Lack of faith? Okay, they're doing, they're on the road. God's doing something with them. Praise the Lord. What else? What else? You know it. What's been oppressing you? Who's been oppressing you? The oppressor's been using someone to oppress you. Well, rebuke the oppressor, praise God. That's what the Bible says. Rebuke the oppressor. Defend the fatherless. Those that need to be defended. The underdog. Plead for the widow. Look out for the widow. Look out for them single moms. Come on, somebody. Praise the Lord. That's that right there. There it is. And then in verse 18, please put verse 18. In verse 18, he says, come now, let us reason together. Now, this is a wonderful God. He's not, he's not putting a big finger in front of your face and saying, now, listen here, you, you're going to do what I say. No, he said, let's reason together. Let me show you why if you do what I tell you, it's going to benefit you. What a good parent. We should take parent lessons from him. We should take parent lessons. You want your kids to follow you? Explain to them so they can have understanding. And you tell them, look, look, girl, look, boy, you ain't stupid. You a little crazy, little mischief, but you ain't stupid. I'm going to explain to you and you're going to understand why this is the way to go. Because this is going to harm us sooner or later. Sooner or later, it's going to harm us. Okay, let me use an example. For some of you here, it, um, God forbid, uh, you start using heroin and then you start shooting it up. One day, what's going to happen? They might find you with the needle in the arm. But baby, I feel good when I do this. Stupid, there's a consequence. And I'm not disrespecting anybody here or out there. I'm just saying everything we do brings a consequence. So that's why he says in 117, learn to do good. Because it just don't happen. It just don't happen. Okay, here we go. Number eight, life. Number nine, we learn about grace, favor, praise the Lord. And you ready? You ready for the number 10? He nine is grace. Grace and favor. Eight is life. Life. Seven is uh, the seal of the Holy Spirit. I love you. The seal of the Holy Spirit. 
Don't worry, I'll give you this again. All this in Ephesians 1. Man, I'm telling you, you, you really want me to tell you the truth? We could stay all year right here. Where are we at, in July? And tomorrow's going to be August or what? God help me. What is August? Thursday's August. August, September, October, November, December. We can stay five months right here. You got so much to dissect. Let, folks, folks, you watching me on there on the media, on, uh, uh, wherever you're watching me at, stop reading the Bible and, and start letting the Bible read you. I have so much knowledge of him, but I don't know who he is. It's not having knowledge of him, it's knowing who he is. And the only way you're going to know who he is, you got to spend time with him, praise God. In Japanese, we say, Moichi Do, do it again. Come on, Caleb, you know that. Moichi Do, Japa, in India. In India. In India, Japa, Moichi Do, do it again, do it again. Until you understand, until you can just open the Bible and you go, whoa, light hits you. Oh, God. But it says some of us, we read the Bible at night to fall asleep. You know I'm teaching good here. You may not say amen, but I'm teaching right. Me, at nighttime when he wake me up, and I, I, I'm like, oh, Lord, it's 5 o'clock and I got to get up soon. <laughs> Lord, I'll give you strength, son, to get up. I'll get, and then they wonder why I'm like, five more minutes in this bed. <laughs> I've been up all night. I've been partying with the Lord all night. And when you party with the Lord, there's never last calls. Last call, everybody out of the It's an all-nighter. You hear the angels, let's get this party going on. <laughs> let's get this party going on. You hear the revelation? Ow! Oh, hear the revelation? Ow! Oh, praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Keys to walking in God's glory. Right here in Ephesians. Everything you need is right here. Somebody say amen, please. Everything you need is in there. My God, he teaches you about his church. He teaches you about his army. He teaches you about his bride. He teaches you about his family. Right here. Right here. If we were in Louisiana, I'd be like saying, right cheers. I already know about that. Right cheers. All that here. So, verse 17, Ephesians 1, verse 17. Let me, I got five more minutes. Will you give me five more minutes? Will you give me five more minutes? Good, 5, 10, 15, 20, good, good. Good, that's good. Thank you so much. All right, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 17. Okay? And Ephesians 1, 17. Go back to the epistles. Ephesians... 117. Okay, he says that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, keys to walking in God's glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. It's not just having knowledge of him, it's knowing who is him. Okay? And then this revelation that he wants to give you, when I was, the last time I was with you, I explained to you, it's not new revelation. He wants you to get understanding on the revelation that God has already given us. Praise the Lord. You can't handle what he's given you. How is he going to give you something else? For you to get promoted, you got to overqualify where you at. Are you listening to me? That's a good place to say amen. Okay? So once we get, once we, 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 oh, 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 yes. Thank you, Father. And then we can get that promotion. Then we can get that promotion. So and then he says, this revelation comes. And then he goes on saying in verse 18, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know that understanding. Remember, when the Lord talks about understanding, he's talking about your mind, Brenda. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, all your spirit. Lean not unto your own understanding. 
Anytime you see that word understanding, especially in the New Testament, he's talking about, or in the Old Testament, he's talking about some, your mind. He's talking about your mind. So, the eyes of your understanding being in line that you may know what is the hope of his calling. What is the riches? Oh, here we go again. The riches of the glory of his inheritance in the same. Praise the Lord. And I believe that was number uh, uh, six, inheritance. Remember? Number six was inheritance. Ooh, pastor can teach. Number six, inheritance. You have a spiritual bank account, but you're not receiving anything because you're not doing what he tells you to do. You know? And then when you do so, you, you mess up your seed by speaking bad things against it. <clears throat> Besides watering, when, he, when Pastor V said about using praise and prayer to water the seed, that's correct. But also, you can't be speaking incorrectly. Oh, this ain't going to work. Oh, this is never going to come back. Really? You're going to wait longer for the harvest. Keep your mouth shut. How you water that seed, it starts with ex an expectation. Expect something good's going to happen to me. There was a, a, a preacher named Oral Roberts, and he used to have a ministry call. This is your day for your miracle. I'm going to expect something good's going to happen to you. Today I'm going to get my harvest. You know, we, we're so used to talking negative that it's very hard for us to talk positive. When it's time to talk positive, we're like, tai, 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 bai, tai, 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 ya, bai. And I says, is that Chinese? No, that's not Chinese. He's just can't talk positive. But you can say something negative right away. And then you, you, what you did, you plucked up, plucked up that seed. Oh, I felt the presence of God. Spiritually speaking, you just uprooted the seed. My father used to tell me, my natural father, that old military police used to tell me, when you bless, don't look at what you're blessing. When you bless, do it, do it unto the Lord. Okay? And believe me, he wasn't a church goer, maybe a scotch drinker, but he wasn't a church goer, praise the Lord. At the end, he did get saved. Praise God. Thank you, Father. Thank you for saving my dad. And, and, and he started coming to church and, and praise the Lord. Because, you know, you know, you, you, you know, as a military, Harry, how that is. You know the life of a military. You know, I'm from Missouri. Show me. All this is nice mumbo jumbo, but show me. Until what? Until the Spirit of God comes in you. You, you, can, you, you got to believe to be able to receive and confess with your mouth that he is Lord and he died for you. Your religion can't, can't save you. Your tradition cannot save you. Praise the Lord. So these are keys into walking in God's glory. All right. So right here in Revelation, let me give you these two scriptures just for your homework. Isaiah 11.2, please. Isaiah 11.2, I got to close up. Philippians chapter 3, verse 10. This is your homework. Thank God your pastor, your pastor gives you homework. Isaiah 11.2. Philippians chapter 3, verse 10. I feel so free. Thank you, Father. I feel so free. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Oh, God, I love you. Thank you, Father. Thank you for being a wonderful God. Thank you for being a loving Father. Praise the Lord. Thank you, 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 Father. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you for allowing us you called us to obtain this God glory. And you called us to be glory carriers. Praise the Lord. Amen. It's inside of us. We're carrying it. Let's let it out. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Any moment now, that thing's going to come out. Good things are going to start happening to you. Are you listening to me? Praise the Lord. Good things, man. Bad things, those bad things are over. Hallelujah. Put your heart in God's hand. Praise the Lord. And receive his manifestation. 
God's glory for your life. Like never before, praise God. Like never before, praise God. Come on, when is going to happen? When you get to heaven? Can I have a little bit of this down here too, praise God? Can I get a little bit of glory down here too, praise the Lord? We got some people we need to help and feed. Amen. You know you feel good when you help somebody. You know you do. What a great feeling. Amen. All right, so in Jesus' name, uh, Philippians, Philippians chapter 3, verse 10, Colossians 1, 19. Colossians, so I said Isaiah 11, 2. Oh, thank you, Lord. Philippians chapter 3, verse 10, Colossians 1, 19. And if you're really hungry, I'll give you Psalm 149, verse 4. Amen. Remember, what are the words in verse 19? Dynamic, energetic, mighty, and strong. Those are the words he gave me to give to you. All this in one night, all this, all this is here. He said dynamic. He got some dynamic things for you. Praise the Lord. If you don't know what dynamic is, go to the dictionary, go to Uncle Google, Google it. Praise the Lord. Dynamic. Energetic. You ain't going to feel soft for no more. I'm so tired. No, I'm getting up from this bed. When I go to the next life, I have plenty of time to rest. Got to get up. Praise the Lord. Dynamic. Energetic. Mighty. And strong. And I pray in the name of Jesus, everyone under the sound of my voice, receive strength from the Lord right now. Those back pain, all that nonsense. Get out of here. Lord, I know we got, I know, we, uh, God, I know we deal with trespassers, but God, give us the strength we need so we can go forward. Amen? All right. So uh, you got the three scriptures I gave you. And then here, um, I gave you also Psalm 149, verse 4. And then uh, I'm in 19. I'm going to read it. I'm in Ephesians. Let me read it so we can finish up. Okay, here we go. Verse 19. Out of verse 19, God gave me this. And what it is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe. You cannot receive dynamic, energetic, mighty, and strong if you don't believe. So he said, this is for those who believe. According to the working of his mighty power. So if you believe in his mighty power, you can receive this. You don't have to be tired all the time. You can be energetic. Praise the Lord. And then he says in verse 20, which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead. Praise the Lord. So if he did it for Christ, he's doing it for us. He raised him from the dead, seated him at the right hand in heavenly places, far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in, the age, in this age, but also in that which is to come. Oh, my God, I love it. Verse 22, it looks like we're going to finish chapter 1. Amen. And he will put all things under, under, that was the first portrait I gave you, the first picture, his body. And he'll put all things under his feet and give him to be the head of all things to the church, which his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. And we have finished Ephesians chapter 1, all 23 verses. Somebody with me say praise the Lord. Praise Amen. The Lord. Viewers, thank you so much. God bless you. We'll see you real soon.